for mathematics at the University of Cambridge for 30 years. He's the 2009 recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom and co-author of a brilliant and controversial new book, The Grand Design. And we welcome him back to Larry King Live. We have a series of questions planned. Let's get right to it. Stephen, why is it important to find the grand design of our universe? I believe everyone should have a broad picture of how the universe operates and our place in it. It is a basic human desire, and it also puts our other worries in perspective. You say that science can explain the universe without the need for a creator. Well, what is, what is that explanation? Why is there something instead of nothing? Gravity and quantum theory cause universes to be created spontaneously out of nothing. You write that because there is a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Will you tell me how that law came into existence? Gravity is a consequence of M theory, which is the only possible unified theory. It is like saying, why is two plus two four? I guess simply put, do you believe in God? God may exist, but science can explain the universe without the need for a creator. So he may exist. I'll pick up on that with the panel. Your book has stirred a lot of controversy. Why do you think people react so strongly to your contention that it's not necessary to invoke God to explain the creation of the universe. Science is increasingly answering questions that used to be the province of religion. One of your colleagues at a Cambridge says that science provides us with a narrative as to how existence may happen, but theology addresses the meaning of the narrative. How do you respond to that? The scientific account is complete. Theology is unnecessary. Pretty directly put. <laughs> what gives your life, your existence, meaning? I have a full and satisfying life. My work and my family are very important to me. You recently said that you see great dangers for the human race. What are the sources of these dangers? Is it mankind itself or external factors? We are in danger of destroying ourselves by our greed and stupidity. We cannot remain looking inwards at ourselves on a small, an increasingly polluted and overcrowded planet. Well then, what are mankind's chances of surviving these dangers? If we can get through the next few hundred years, we should have spread out into space. Then, an isolated disaster will not wipe out the entire human race. Now we got to get through the next 200 years, though. We'll be right back with more of the directly responsive Stephen Hawking. We'll meet an outstanding panel following him. The book is widely discussed and being reviewed everywhere. The book is The Grand Design. Right back with Stephen Hawking after this. According to M theory, ours is not the only universe. Instead, M theory predicts that a great many universes were created out of nothing. Their creation does not require the intervention of some supernatural being or god. Rather, these multiple universes arise naturally from physical law. They are a prediction of science. We're back with Stephen Hawking. He's in Cambridge, England. He's the co-author, and we're going to meet the co-author. 
in a little while of the grand design. You have written, Stephen, that time travel was once considered scientific heresy. How likely is it that time travel will one day become a reality? Time travel used to be thought of as science fiction, but Einstein's theory of general relativity allows the possibility that we could warp space-time so much that you could fly off in a rocket and return before you set out. I was one of the first to write about the conditions under which this would be possible. Unfortunately, it is likely that the warping would destroy the spaceship and maybe the space-time itself. If you could time travel, would you go forward or backward? I would go forward and find if M theory is indeed the theory of everything. <laughs> do, do, do you have a hero? Who is your hero? And if so, why? Galileo, the first modern scientist who realized the importance of observation. I feel closest to him because he followed his nose and was a bit of a rebel. You have said that experiencing zero gravity is one of the most meaningful experiences you've ever had. Why? Zero gravity was amazing. I could have gone on and on. Being confined to a wheelchair doesn't bother me, as my mind is free to roam the universe, but it felt wonderful to be weightless. What, what, Stephen, do you most hope people take away from your new book, The Grand Design? In your opinion, and it's a, it's a great book with a lot of important points, what is the most important point in the book? That science can explain the universe, and that we don't need God to explain why there is something rather than nothing, or why the laws of nature are what they are. What quality or lesson would you most like to pass on to your children? Look up at the stars, not down at your feet. Succinct. <laughs> and Stephen, finally, you are 68 years old. You'll be 69 in January. Your many admirers always worry about and wonder about your health. So can you tell us how you're doing? When I was first diagnosed with ALS, I was given two years to live. Now, 45 years later, I'm doing pretty well. Stephen Hawking, who we trust will be with us for many, many years to come, with many more books to come, with many more thoughts to come. We thank him very much. Stephen Hawking, theoretical physicist, Lucasian professor, of math at the University of Cambridge for 30 years, the 2009 recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, and the co-author of the new book, The Grand Design. What do scientists and people of faith think about Hawking's theories? We'll find out that, and we'll meet the co-author of the book next. Only a very few would allow creatures like us to exist. Thus our presence selects out from this vast array only those universes that are compatible without existence. Although we are puny and insignificant on the scale of the cosmos, this makes us in a sense, the lords of creation. <laughs>